Well guys, how you all doing alright? Welcome back to the channel. Today's Monday the 5th of February. Just out, it's 7 o'clock. I just got down here just before first light, about 6 o'clock. I'm just finished setting up. I thought I'd set everything up first. Um, I got down here, set up one rod, chucked it down the edge, and carried on setting up. I thought I'd wait till the sunshine come up or the light come up and it's light enough to see rather than scrabbling around in the dark i've got both rods set up now i've, I've tucked myself away in the corner i was going to go to the beach and i looked at the forecast yesterday and the time i got home from work and it was about five o'clock and the wind was really picking up and gusting i had a look on uh, google and it was moderate to strong winds around yarmouth uh Caister, and further north we go the strong it was getting 45 to 50 kilometers an hour winds uh, moderate to strong southwesterlies I mean it's I've got a microphone in today so I hope you can hear me all right but uh, got really strong gusts of wind so I'll show you around my peg in a minute I've just come to, so I thought at the last second I thought well, I'm not gonna go to the beach just standing on the beach and it's gonna be blown hooly and big crashing waves and this that and the other so I thought I'd come to the river and do a little bit of piking, dead baiting for piking. So I've, I've, I've plumped for um, the Riviera, Brampton. I, what I did last night as well, I thought, I haven't been down here. I know the rivers were in flood for a long time. I don't know where it was flooded, where we could get down here. So I bought my Langley ticket, just in case I couldn't get down here. But it's all right, it looks good. Um, the paths and the roads were clear coming down here. Um, it's a high tide. Um, I, think, I think it is a high tide about 12 o'clock today at Yama. So, but it's, it's, uh, I'm keeping an eye on it. It might come over the boarding, so um, you know, I might have to move. We'll have to see. I'll show you around the peg in a minute. But I've just got two rods out. Um, I'm float ledgering on this one, and I'm just ledgering on the right hand rod. I have brought my uh, law rod with me, so I can chuck a few laws around. Just on the green bit here i won't go too far but i'll quickly show you the rigs but i'll quickly show you around it's a lovely morning nice pink sky just down on the river really tidal yeah brown and woods end i've just took myself right on the very left end peg off the edge of the stage in here so. So I've got the left rod with well, the, the floats there but I took the uh, slide and stop knot off because um, it's got three ounce lead on it and that's cast probably about nine ten meters out just underneath the tree probably there where my finger is that floats just come up the line and stopped obviously where where it's naturally settled so but that's on a i've got a a bobbin with no weight on it and a drop off and again i'm using the shakespeare 10 foot uh spin the the beater which is i think it's 150 grams or 120 grams sorry uh 40 pound h strand hercules braid that's all the way straight through to that one and 40 pound wire one single 3-0 circle hook and a two mustad viking barbless treble and that's just literally tight here you go, it's got literally just uh, the same with the other one i've got a three ounce flattened pair lead on there and that's right out in the middle that's had a couple of beeps um so i might check that in a minute that seems to have uh, tightened up a bit but that's on a ledger so anything literally touching that I've cast out again that's on I've got a fox uh, drop off there swinger that's just uh, Ron Thompson 12 foot 
two and a half pound test curve carp rod an old shakespeare 7000 or 070 omni which my late uncle gave me there's 25 pound mono on there there's a 40 pound shock leader again down to exactly the same 40 pound wire 30 circle and a two size two mustad treble i've got sardines on both of them i've got i've got some herrings um i went out yesterday stopped off at the morrison's bought a load of mackerel and herring and mussels and squid but as i say i've changed my mind so i've got plenty of bait for the next session so here we are my little peg oh Got a few nice beeps on that right hand one I'll, I'll check that in a minute but yeah i'm just literally on the green i've got a corner peg here i thought i'd go in here because it's literally right out the well as much as out the windows i can get I bought my lawn rod as well. I just hooked it up with uh, Rapala Shad. This is a fire perch one. It's about 40 grams. Nice rattle inside. Two really sharp trebles and a little blade. Again, same 40 pound wire. And it's got 30 pound. Um, I think this is fox 30 30 35 pound fox uh, braid on there so it's probably about quarter past seven mr robin's out wanting some breakfast but i haven't got anything to give him but just gonna sit and chill i'll we'll cast a few lures i'm gonna grab myself a coffee and uh, we'll get back to you in a minute. Yeah, it's sort of typical. I mean, I put a lot of uh, overtime in the last two or three weeks, and I've done six day weeks uh, for double time. Do you like my new hat? <laughs> I've got a t shirt as well. It's from a birthday from work, and uh, you all know I'm a fishing fanatic. So, fishing nut, probably. <laughs> But um, yeah, the last couple of Mondays, the only day off I've had is the weather's not been brilliant. It's been seems to be the worst day of the week the last two or three weeks. But nothing I can do about it. So I just got to get it out. Got to get out there and uh, brave the elements and uh, make the most of the one day off. So, but apart from being being windy, it's not cold. I haven't put my jacket on yet. And, I've got my suit in the car, but I ain't going to need that today. But as I say, I mean, I don't think it's worth well, worth a trip out to the coast today. I, I had a look at the webcam last night, the Sheringham and Cromer webcam, and the waves are kicking up horses, um, the white horses everywhere. So I thought, no, there's no point. And it's supposed to get stronger as the day goes on. Um, nine o'clock ten o'clock it's going to start picking up and this afternoon it's going to be really gusting so i thought you know even, even if i did push it and try and get a couple of hours in it had only been one or two hours and it would probably been you know if, if i could get one or two hours in but it wasn't worth the chance so i thought i'd come here try for a pike a river pike there's a guy who just come down he's setting up now i just spoke to him he was down last week uh, i think so i have to keep everything locked down so i put my phone on a tripod i was keeping it between my legs just as blown over a couple of times yeah he came down last week with a mate or two and uh roach fishing and feed the fishing for roach and bream and he said they never had nothing no no fish no bites so but I have seen fish top him. I've seen fish top him this morning. That's, mind you, I'm saying that. Our wind's fresh today.
but I'll bring the rods in in a minute check the bait especially on the right hand one because that did have a couple of good beeps um, where it was just something knocking into the line because that's got a, a good three ounce three and a half ounce lead on that one of the old smaller sea leads well what I make myself with the um, adjusting mold but sometimes it's better here especially when you feed a fishing to have your rod up in the air because it is tidal um, and sometimes you do need like three ounces of lead two to three ounces of lead to hold the bottom when it's pulling so I mean I've got my rods down at the minute but I was thinking if when the tide starts to pull and this that and the other I'll probably uh, pop the front to uh, rod pod up a bit get the line out of the water a little bit more just so there's less resistance on the line i'm not going to get affected by the tide or flow of any weed or sticks or debris coming down onto onto the line I'm not too far away, I ain't gonna go too far away. Have any any beeps, I can be straight back on here. Yeah, so when you're setting this up, you got your main drag, you're just tighter, less drag. And then you got your sort of a drop of drag, as I call it. So when you're setting up your laws or whatever law, it's what to set this tight or looser to counterbalance or counter the spin. So when you drop it, not overrunning and that stops there's no overrun you can loosen it off that's not too bad it's better actually but the more you loosen it the more chance you're going to get an overrun if you're not used to I'm just still working out the best way to uh retrieve these laws because it seems to it is a jerk bait and it's, it's like a slow flutter horizontal flutter so I'm just going to sort of like slowly sink and jerk it back I'll try just a steady retrieve as well but Nice morning actually. You can 
see that. I'm not sure if I can see that. But... Deep diving, what I'd call a deep diving one, but uh, it's heavy, but you have to slow retrieve, I think, keep it deep. Here's Wendy. There you are, I'm going to have to pull my rods and just pull both my rods for a minute. And then have a. Let's just look at that, it seems to have changed a bit. There's a, like, a load of willows, bushes, and all coming out. And, Seems to be a slightly different area around there. Oh, this is where uh, sometimes I find a Fixed spools, a few normal spools better. I think it's more versatile fixed spool, and I see why people, you know, do use them because you can put on any law, pretty much any weight, any size, and it's just a lot more versatile than all that is not enjoyable is using a bait caster, but. If you want to put a light spinner on or anything like that, you know, tight little spaces and you just want to flick it underarm. It's so much easier with a fixed ball wheel than it is a bait caster. As I say, you need to get the momentum of the uh, spool going and 30, 40 pound braid or whatever you're using and everything else. And few people being in the tree in this in this peg. Branches and bits and pieces. The fixed four wheels so much easier. You haven't got to get the uh, momentum of the spool going. Nice under armour for a little bit of a pendulum sort of like swing. You just hold it above the law or on the on the wire. Got to be careful here because I know there are tree branches. and have a move along. Let's 
go for a faster retrieve. Okay, it's half past seven. What I've just done is, I'll switch around in a minute. Instead of recast, put a st sliding stop knot on the left hand one. It needs to go up another foot. It's just under the surface. I can see it, but you probably won't be able to see it on camera. But because the tide's picking up now, um, I've just put the butt rest, rest down and the front rest up in the air a bit just to elevate the line out of the water. And it's made a lot of, a hell of a lot of difference. And it's it's registering the bites a lot more. It's tightened up to the lead a lot better. Um, I've still got all those tightened up. I don't want it slacking in line. I've got the bobbins and everything set really loose. I'll show you around. Yeah, I've just raised the front rest right up. And the back one's down a bit. So now, literally, the slightest touch and they're away. Um, it's just make the, for some of the reasons, make the front ones more responsive as well. The front bobbins, just elevating it, lifting that line out of the water. There's a couple of grebes uh, over there, diving, oh, hang on. There's a couple of nice grebes diving and going under and I've seen the fish topping so there's definitely fish here see a couple of fish topping two thirds of the way across but I haven't fished it I've fished it, I think I fished it once last year and I don't know why because it's a fantastic place to come it's free it's easy it's parking right behind you can night fish it. It's all well. It used to be always a mecca for bream, um, and I remember coming down here. Just pulled out of a fish there. I can't believe it. Can't believe it. I had a fish on and it's come off right at the edge. Damn it. I mean, what does that on a river? I'm not understanding that. I'm 
refresh this bait. Any good? Nah, mate. Really? Nothing. Strange, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to go further up. Are you going to go down here, Rockland, or? Where are you going to go, Rockland, or? Where are you going to head, Rockland? Are you going to head up to Rockland, or? I don't know, I'm just going to follow along and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is weird. It's weird at the moment. Yeah, yeah. It's just like dead. Okay, but it's all the high tides and the salt, or what? And all the floods and cold water. Yeah. I think the best place it, I, I know of is, is Roxham. It's been a constant, but you yeah. Know. So. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I used to fish that all the time. We used to have uh, matches there in the winter time. It used to be fantastic for roach and stuff. You know. But, yeah, the, the city's no good at the minute. Ah. Yeah. Oh well, all the best. <laughs> I just bought in. Had a good take, but um, I could feel it banging away. As I was bringing it in, it sort of got snagged up, and on it as well was another rig that we had lying on. So whether, well, there wasn't anyone here this morning, so whether there's a fish on this rig, but. <laughs> must have been a big bream or something if it was but it was a yeah there was something something decent on it wasn't massive but it sort of jammed up down here and let a bit of lo loose line out and pulled there's no bait on when it got back um, and then there's that rig wrapped around so uh not having a lot of luck at the minute, but I'll keep persevering. I'll keep persevering. It's well on the ebb now. It's definitely on well on the ebb. It's dropped a couple of foot, two or three foot by look of it. So, but it's flowing left to right because the floats are pulling. But I've got the rod tips right up now, as high as I can get them. Yeah, I remember coming down here, I used to live in Lincolnshire at the time, in Horncastle. And, uh, it was like 18, 19, me and my mates, Ed Tig, and uh, his brother and that, come down here camping. And back then there was no restrictions, you could put a tent on the green and camp up. Came here for a week. But uh, and Simon as well, and we had we had a blistering week. I mean, we were fishing, you know, night fishing most of the time. And pubs up there, and we'd go for a few bevies in the evening, and get arsehole <laughs> and come back and do things that eight, eighteen and nineteen year olds, you know. But uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Or, you know, drinking and being near the river and at night and it's that and never irresponsible <laughs> but uh, we had night after night after night 100 pound plus 120 150 pounds of green and that's no exaggeration just literally on fishing on a slide afloat at night and uh, a couple of odd lengths out and just bunging in ground bait with loads of sweet corn like two getting through like two three four tins of sweet corn and you'd have three keep nets in the morning it was just you know always doubt back then and even when i moved into norwich like 10 15 years ago you'd come down here and to do the continental st style i mean if you want you know put in the, if you can guarantee a place and come down here break a bit of a swim or pre-bait which is you know it was quite hard down here but get down here early morning middle of the afternoon if there's not too many boats get yourself a peg and stick 30 cricket balls i mean i mean biggest balls you can 
laced with some micro pellets, squats, dead maggots, casters. The bream love the casters here. I don't put chopped worm in, never put chopped worm in. I only add that as and when I need to hit up because it can have the opposite effect sometimes. Sometimes it can be blistering and they want it, and other times it just makes them all finicky and funny. And then put 20, 30 cricket balls in and just sit and leave them for a few, an hour or two. I don't even think about chucking in for at least an hour and a half. And then, you know half an hour before dark again lace it up with another dozen balls of ground bait and that'll see you through to the morning and I'll obviously keep feeding every every time with your feeder and I also used to guarantee you big bags of bream big bags of bream but you never hear of all, all them hundred pound ton you know ton weights anymore you just don't never hear of it They're there, but they've obviously uh, dispersed and gone further afield. Or you know, a lot, I know a lot of people are saying predation and other elements are to blame, but I think if you put the hard work in, you'll get the rewards. Because they're still there, maybe not in the numbers, but you you can still have it. You know, you, you do the pre baiting and put put the time in at the right times. You, you'll get a hundred pound plus, no problem. But you you know, you don't expect to come down here with a couple of quid's worth of bait. You know, buy yourself a twenty kilo sack of brown crumb and a couple of big bags, cheap bags of frozen corn. And uh, what I do is put the corn. Because if you just use it frozen it tends to float just put it into boiling water for no more than a minute so it starts all sink rinse it off you can do it cheap to micro pellets a couple of pints of maggots kill, kill them make, don't make them dead pre-bait doesn't have to cost you a lot you don't have to go out and buy all these fancy five pounds a kilo and a half bags of back, ground bait all these branded things just get yourself some brown crumb Stick a bit of uh, coriander in there, a bit of uh, molasses, you know, a few liquids, whatever you want, CSL, all my favourites, but CSL liquid, a bit of um, molasses, anything like that, anything sweet, chuck a little bit of fish meal in, get a scoop or two of fish meal ground bait for a quid. And the job's a good one, you know, it doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg. Yeah, it's about quarter past eight and just refresh my baits and cast out again i keep getting a few little beeps on this right hand rod i mean i've gone a little bit further across and to the left so it's off the muscle bed a bit i've got mr heron perched neatly uh, on the tree over there i'll switch you around <laughs> he's obviously see something he's a perched and aware just as long as he doesn't dive down and uh, grab my sardine uh, probably the best run I've had all uh, the last couple of months <laughs> I certainly know about that that left hand bobber went up and down then Definitely movement on the bobbin.
ra mâm right, I'm going to bring that right hand one in have a check of that and have a recast I'll leave you there actually Take this microphone off What done with that one is you probably see where it landed a good two-thirds of the way across near the tree because I know that's swimming around up there free fishing here where the tree is sort of like, uh, that there is a big mussel bed and you see all you always get the bream on a mussel bed if you could just fish this this side of it just so you're not on the mussel bed with a sharp oh, sorry. Just get microphone. yeah if you fish this just this side of the mussel bed so your line's not getting cut and you know grazed and all the rest of it on the on the sharp mussels um you always get a bite always get bream there's a, there is a big mussel bed, it's been there for years. Bring up great big swan mussels and everything. Is, I was just cast out as I say, and I'm gonna give it a good half an hour now. I'm not gonna keep winding in and I'll give it half an hour 
and then I'll reel in, check the baits and cast to a different spot and I'll just fan my way around because I think if we're going to get anything, it'll, you know, half an hour is plenty of time for anything to be in and around the area to move in and have a go. So that's, what, that's the plan. And then probably what I'll do is an hour before I want to go home, pack all this lot away and grab the lure rod and just work my way up and down the river and have a couple of casts. The sun's getting out nice, it's getting out absolutely gorgeous. Well, I want to say gorgeous, that's a bit over-exaggeration. <laughs> it's not like 35 degrees or anything like that. It's dry, it's clear, it's brightening up. Bit of a cool breeze, but it's not too bad. It's probably about 12 degrees. shame we couldn't get to the coast today but um that's just the way it is i can't change the weather i can't pick and choose um monday's my only day off so i had to do something it was a bit too late uh because i say I, I, I went to was it yesterday or the day before uh, the day before sorry we we're on friday got a load of mackerel fresh mackerel herring mussels and some prawns and bits and pieces and uh, was all intention of going beach fishing but last minute i've had to uh, change plans and i would have done what the geese is doing and done a bit of course fishing i think um but i didn't have time yesterday um to get to the tackle shop and get bait and get some maggots worms and all the rest of it so i thought i'd use what, what i had some sardines i've got some sardines and, and some herring and there's one little mackerel in there i'll put on later and just use use what i've got and i've always done well on sardines anyway so well it's 99 of the time that's all i've got <laughs> so it's, it's all or nothing so I've got herring to put on. I'll try that a bit. It's a bit oilier. I was just watching uh, Brett's fishing diaries yesterday, and yeah, he's down at Hardy Slip. And one little whiting at the end but yeah he's still got plagued with crabs now I, I commented last night on you know i don't know what it is this year normally it's you know it starts in november all depending on what the weather's like and that lasts about three four weeks you know five weeks and it's done and by by mid-january it's they're normally all done and dusted and gone um not this year well into february and uh there's still thousands of them absolutely everywhere they're everywhere you go they're stripping the baits out so there must be some kind of a i wouldn't say invasion but boom in uh production I mean, in the numbers for whatever reason whether it's because it's less fish eating the crabs You know, put, put a comment below, what do you reckon? I mean, you know, I always say there is a circle of life, especially in the ocean, and, you know, if certain species are thin on the ground, then other species thrive, and then that just throws the whole circle out of balance, and... Uh, there's, you know, if, if there's fewer and fewer cod and bass and rays and smooth hounds and dogfish and bits and pieces, you know, that eat in the crabs, and then the crabs will just uh, multiply and multiply. It's like anything else, you know.
I mean, every year or every couple of years they reduce the minimum landing size and catch size and so obviously the, the bigger fish are getting fewer and fewer and fewer and to keep up with demand they're putting the catch size down and I don't know to, to, I don't to do everything they can with you know net sizes being bigger and catch limits and that but I think I still think the biggest problem is the stupid laws on what commercial boats can go and catch and have licenses for I, th I think every commercial boat it should be X amount of weight per year regardless and and, and what you catch is you take because you know if they haven't got a license for X X fish haven't got a license for cod and, and they drag a net of cod in they have to throw it all back 90% dead and it's it's wrong it's, it's so wrong and what you catch what whether it's your intended species or not you you've got to bring it ashore and t take it to market and, and, and you know that's that's what how it should be i think anyway what do you reckon we'll put the world to rights <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, you, you, you see all these fishermen going out and dragging up a load of prawns and so I can't, I'm not, I'm not allowed to fish with prawns, I ain't got a license, so they've got to toss them all back and it's like, it's disgusting, it's a shame. We need to be more resourceful. Okay, there is a boat coming. If he's not going to moor up and he's going to carry on, I should probably bring this right hand rod in because I can see the line and it's right out near the other side. So I'm not going to risk it, him cutting me off in the propellers. Yeah, I've got him. It's making a big difference. Oh, hang on a minute. I know he's put you back on here. I saw that rod tip go there, did you? Oh, if not, I'll make sure my mic. Just cast that one out directly down the middle. Right, I'm just going to put you down in a minute. Keep an eye on that float. I'm not sure if it's because we're on the ebb now and it's flowing quite quite fast left to right. Um, where there's bits of weed and debris moving down the river now, it's knocking the line. But I've moved the stop knots up. I've cast out, I've felt the lead down. I've tightened up to the lead and let a load of loose line out <coughs> just so the float pops up. So, I don't know if you can see the float. I'll see if I can uh, zoom in and then any movement on the, if, if anything take it, the float's going to disappear. It's just bobbled on the surface. It's just about just there. It's about midway. There. 
the right hand rod I've just cast I swapped things around put that one down the middle the left one down the middle the right one is now about a third of the way across a third to halfway but it's a lot further downstream the left, uh, right hand one sorry is probably around here about 30 yards downstream I'm going to hit this, I'm going to hit this, I'm going to put it back. There's definitely a yank up there, I saw that on the bobbin. Oop. Missed that one. I missed that one, or if it was a bite. It definitely the, the bobbin flew up and the float disappeared, but nothing there when I wound down to it. So, so what I've done is I've got one of the uh, half a heron. I'm going to put this on. I'm going to try this next time. It's just got a bit of a 
cork stuck in the end there just to float it up a little bit to give it a bit of buoyancy so the next time I bring it in I'll put this on see if it makes any difference But it's staying busy. Hook shot. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep busy, as I say, and we'll And they, uh, yeah, they I mean, keep busy, keep casting every half an hour, just trying different places. Or I think it's, if I'm going to get anywhere, it will be down straight down the middle in the deepest areas, sort of middle to two thirds of the way across. Um, if there's going to be any pipe, I'm pretty sure they're going to be hiding in the deepest water. Um, a little bit dis, uh, disheartening and just knowing that a guy he's gone and left now he didn't have a bite not a touch but um, I don't know what kind of fishing he was doing it wasn't feeder fishing he had a, must have been float fishing he, well, he didn't have a whip or a pole I think so A bit, bit of a strange choice. I mean, over here you, you want to be on the pole, or a, a decent whip. You want eight, eight sort of eight, nine meter whip, where you can run it through. Then, if you've got like a like slider bolter, it's a really good method for using hemp and tears in the winter here. Casters hemp and tears can really work well with a bit of punch bread or feeder fishing, as I say, out, but. Just go light with the with the feed, a little bit of squats and dead pinkies, one or two bits of corn, but not a lot. Just feed as you go. But the roach fishing used to be brilliant down here. I, I used to always do well. Um, if it's flowing really hard, if you try and use a flat float, but I tend to use a pole fish it now with a bit longer line and run it through for like two to three gram sometimes four gram float even go down to sort of one gram sometimes if it, if, if the flows steadies up and uh, that slack tide but normally about three two and a half to three grams when it's running just have it have a trip it on the bottom on off just holding back and just keep loose feeding just little and often every single cast but if you've got a, a decent eight eight meter whip and a slider bolsa and, and fish it like shirt button style it's really good for the roach it's just like a stick float and you got it's the same as like the hair where it floats sliding and you use a stop knot tiny little bead above the float and a stop knot and it's got two two eyes two brass eyes one in the side and one on the bottom fence or out at a right angle so the line passes through it Especially here when it's 14, 15 foot deep. That 
think next week I've got um, I've got three days off for some strange reason. So I will definitely be uh, will definitely be course fishing. I might go to Womack, stay. I'll have a, I'll have a think. I might go up to Roxham. Um, Roxham is always produced as well for roach and stuff in the winter. And bream. So I'll keep my ear to the grounds. See what's, where it's fishing well. Keep an eye on the weather conditions and the tide and the rain and all the rest of it. And probably, you know, weather permitting, I'll have one day, one day on the beach on the coast, one day on the river, horse fishing, and the other day I'll just chill and catch up with a few jobs. Me talking, I haven't even got my bloody microphone. I hope you're getting all of that. So I think I'm not used to wearing the mic, and the last thing I want to do is if I do get a bite or a run, I'll have to get up. I mean, it's got a long enough wire. I mean, it's got about three four meter wire and i just thought i yanked the tripod over <laughs> if, I, if i did get a run we'll forget that i've got the you know what well, I've, I've got to go get the landing nets over there it's not not in a good place yeah we're having the last couple of mondays off well yeah and uh, just the one day and uh, going fishing getting really behind on some of my jobs at home it needs a bloody good clean the car needs a good clean there's mud sands you name it uh, needs taken to the garage and have a good jet wash and just your general stuff All right, and floats has bobbed up and gone again. Hang on, hang on. It's gone. Leave it, I missed it, look, I missed it again. Bait is gone completely. I saw that float bob come straight out of the water, and then it just disappeared off. And I missed it. Damn you. That was a definite bite. The float lifted clean out of the water, and then I watched it just sail away and disappear. Alright. And they're all on the sardine, so I don't think I'm gonna change it in a minute. I'm gonna get another sardine on and get that cast back out where that was a bite. I'll take this microphone off a minute.
don't know if you can see that. I'm going to move that and the little float starts to go under. So. Can you see the float? One second, well, let's move my finger. There's a beep on the right hand one there, and uh, it laid flat on the water and then disappeared straight under. I think I think I might have to be a bit quicker on these bikes if it is I bought both rods in a well the right hand rod is on the I'm just pouring myself a coffee the right hand rod is uh, well I just got that bite cast it straight back out in the same spot and the left hand rod I've just brought in, I missed that one if it was a bite. And that's probably about 10 15 yards, a bit further out, straight in front of me. But I can see both floats now, so the river has dropped. Looking at the board, in it's probably dropped a good four foot by the look of it. Because that was pretty much flushed to the top of the board in this morning, and it's that's a good four foot down. But if it's getting to the bottom of the ebb and starts to slacken off, then they normally go quiet, which is not a good sign. Oh, and I was going to say that float in front of me is disappearing away but I don't know if that's just the the tide and the wind no that's fine it's, it's just the waves and yeah I was a little bit um, <clears throat> annoyed about last week I uh, went down to Trimmingham had a nice day down at Trimmingham caught uh, two big white in, two big fat chunky white in and uh, three little dabs they all came within about half an hour 45 minutes of each other all on the first hour or so hour, hour and a half of the ebb and I don't know what happened I've recorded most of it on my mobile and some on my GoPro. I've got all the GoPro files. Um, I took the SIM card out of the GoPro. I was uploading them to the computer. While they was uploading, I had 37 video files on my phone. I watched them all. I mounted it properly. Once the GoPro card had finished, took that out of the PC out of the SD card slot put the micro SD into it and plugged it into the computer and it just said card error card error um, fix this problem so I press fix this problem and then everything just a bit disappeared went blank 
So I took the card out, I put it back on my phone. I noticed on my phone, because it's a uh, 64 gig card, just watching that float. Yeah, because it's a 64 gig card, there's like 12 gigs uh, used up. 12 to 15 gig used. I think it was 13.8 or something like that of gig used but the whole card was blank so I knew there was stuff stuff there and uh, I went online I googled it and this and the other and first of all I tried I downloaded free copy of um, disk drill or drill disk whatever it's called yeah, well, it's free and it analyzed it and I found everything on there all the pictures all the videos the mp3 mp4 formats and files and all the rest of it found everything but then it wants you to pay 300 quid for the, the version or buyer activation code or whatever for about 300 quid so i thought no so i went back online and downloaded um another disc one i can't, can't remember what it's called it'll come to me in a minute um disc base or something and another one it was it's dele uh, designed for operating systems for building windows to formatting partitioning discs and that so i've downloaded that that's 100 percent free but um and i've followed all the process and this and that and the other and it's again it's that it's found all the the videos and all the files and that but um I'm not able to retrieve them at the minute, but uh, I know there's places in in and around Norwich that do it and charge you a, a fair bit, 90, 100, 150, 200 quid or whatever. But you know, it's for, for one video. Um, unless anyone's got any suggestions, any ideas, or knows anyone who, or give me any ideas how I can get the files back because they're there, and some are highly recoverable some are medium some are low it says um but they're all on the all they're all on the card but they're just not in a readable format for whatever reason whatever whatever's happened so yeah it's a little bit gutted with that after and i spent a lot of time last week on last week's video of filming the intro and stopping and i say there was 37 videos on on the on the card um all gone <laughs> at the you know the ones on the gopro were like my scenic shots so i had the gopro on the background on the pivo where it spins and that and used that for my distant shots and scenic shots and this and the other but the one on my camera had everything on it the rigs tackle and the fish and all sorts so really a bit i was a bit well i was spitting blood <laughs> when it happened but what's happened's happened and hopefully learn from the mistakes i know now i've, I've, I've taken all my cards and uh formatted them and i need to format them more often um to stop errors because if you keep using it all the time and deleting it it's normally what happens so i bought another card the ones that i've got <coughs> took everything off it and formatted them so fingers crossed we're gonna have no problems with this one i've just brought that in i don't know why i can't get on with these circle hooks and the treble hook it just doesn't seem to present very well and sit on the line it just that just keeps pulling through the fish all the time the circle hook just keeps ripping through so i've just gone back to the two trebles so uh it just stays on the hook better the fish look presents better it doesn't rip through the flesh but bringing it back again i have to put that no idea yeah let's put back another sardine yeah if we put it back in here yeah it's two now they've had all ripped like that 
all the guts out look so I don't know if that's crayfish I mean, look at the state of that I mean, you should see the float bob sail away um, I don't know if it's missed it or if it's crayfish or or what but every time I, I strike into it it's just nothing there so must be crayfish or what, I don't know so because just getting little one or two beeps or three beeps and I don't know why it had strange how the float sailing away but I mean if it was a pike it would I'd probably go for a proper run I know, I know it would uh, you get a single tone if it's taking it and running with it but uh, if anyone's got any ideas suggestions whether they're big perch crayfish crabs maybe even you know it's tidal so got got thousands of bloody crabs everywhere at the minute so you know switch around because that sun's a bit uh, blinding behind me well it's half past ten I didn't go nowhere fast it's had a bite but uh, that sums my day up so what you, what, what you caught today uh, tin of beans mate tin of beans mate that's what I caught an empty baked bean can <laughs> I hope it's an empty baked bean, bean can yeah a very old rusty baked bean can. Yeah. Oh. How have you been? Yeah, terrible mate. <laughs> uh. you definitely weren't Heinz. Alright, let's get this cast back out again. I think you uh, half past ten now the opportunity for catching a pipe probably beam and gone oh dear well I don't know what's just jumped in front of me there's a really big fish when I say really big fish I'm talking like four pounds five pounds it wasn't a roach it wasn't a bream it was silver I don't know if it was bass a bit strange but it's a big fish it's a big fish crashed on the surface no definitely worth a salmon <laughs> but there's the other thing of it is a big bar of silver um, strange very strange Come on, come on, come on. That's just me going, that one. That's not right. Yeah, strange. I don't know if it's a, a bass or what. I don't know what it was. Only jumped once. Two flashes of silver. Not far from where my float was. So.
down. You know, we're getting done bits of weed or that's just me starting to run through now but some of it's all taken out of this one as well That's a bit weird today. Stomach's been taken out of that a little bit, but there's a little bit of weed on it, but not enough to uh, slam that bobbin up like that. Well, you heard it. Yeah, it's coming up to 12 o'clock. I've thrown the towel in. <coughs> I haven't caught any fish today. I've lost one close in earlier on. It <coughs> snagged up and came off. It was attached to a feeder and that. And I've had a drop run. And I don't know if there's been plenty of sort of crayfish around. It's just been ragging the bait because the stomachs of the sardines are that coming back all um, ripped out. Just like that. Just like knocks the bob and just blip, 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 blip. one or two and then nothing for 15 20 minutes then doo, doo, doo. and they bring it back and the bait's had but no proper runs no 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 proper runs at all but anyway that's the way it goes we've got out we tried i mean there's plenty of birds there's grebe over there again diving again with a fish in his mouth there's a few cormorants so there's fish here I'm going to start tidying up, packing away. <clears throat> if I get any fish, I'll be back. But if not, all the best, guys. Take care, and I'll see you again in another video. And if you liked it, press the like button. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. That'll, that'll be great. It all helps if you want to. If you don't want to, you don't want to. But um, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, any comments, and any sort of ideas, any anything you want to add, drop a, drop a link below. And, uh, I look forward to listening to what you've got to say, <coughs> and I'll get back to you. All right, cheerio, guys.